Welcome to another Demarcation Media LEGO review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Avengers Endgame Final Battle. This is a part of LEGO's Infinity Saga set wave. You can see it up there on the box. And this is kind of their way to fill in gaps that they missed for the movies. I think we got, in this wave, we got a set from Iron Man 1... And then we got one, uh, I think it's a Guardians ship. I don't know if it's from a specific movie or not. And then we got a couple Endgame sets that really needed to happen. So this is the one of the biggest. It's I was going to say the biggest, but it's actually not. The Benatar is the biggest. But this is the second biggest of the wave. And we get all three of kind of the big heroes we have cap iron man and thor all in one set but i'll talk about that in a minute uh the biggest thing here is thanos and his bald head so without any further ado let's look at the box real quick set up pretty nicely we got thanos grinning like a madman or like the madman he is and over here we have kind of comic style edging on the box. Same on the top. It's a big box and it's kind of thin. So there's the back. We get a replica of the front part. And there's a representation of that scene in Endgame where they catch Thanos and the Chitauri and lock them in the laser prison. Uh, wait a minute. That didn't happen. Yeah, I don't know what Lego was thinking there. Uh, can't tell you. I also can't tell you how Black Panther is drinking coffee through his mask. Alrighty, so there's the whole set all put together. We have all the minifigures there. We have our side build. So let's just jump in. We'll start with the minifigures, starting with the most boring one, which is that Chitauri. Okay, so here he is, our Chitauri. Uh, before we start looking at him, I'm just gonna say, somebody just started mowing outside my house. So if you hear any background noise, that's what it is. So first of all, he's armed with a stud shooter with a purple beam. Uh, that's correct, the purple is correct, but the silver stud shooter, pretty generic. I mean, it works. It works. There have been better builds that LEGO has done for these guns, but it works. Now, the figure himself looks so much better than the first ones LEGO did. Uh, the first ones LEGO did were an absolute mess. The head was this gold thing with these angular visors that sort of looked like they're war masks, but not really. The torso was a tangled mess. Uh, so this is just way more defined, much better. He has his war mask off. He has his little creepy, screamy face. I like the green eyes. They really pop. You can see the weird kind of saggy skin stuff on their chest. Then the rest of the armor. No printing on the legs. I know a lot of people are upset about that, but to be honest... I mean, maybe he could have used a little, but it is what it is. I think it's good enough. And then around the back, some more nice print, even on the back of the head. That's pretty cool. So definitely the least interesting figure, but not by any means a bad figure. Our next figure is Scarlet Witch. And you can see that she is kind of hovering in lieu of this assembly here. There is these pink burst pieces, which you get a whole handful of those. I'll show you those in a minute. So you get that. And then this is a new piece. It's not one I've gotten yet. I think it's been out for a little bit now, but it kind of is in the style of the power bursts, and it kind of acts as a stand for figures who use it. That's pretty cool. Now, this is a decent Scarlet Witch minifigure. I say decent because... The past figures we've gotten have all been also decent. We've never really gotten a good Scarlet Witch. The hair is always wrong. The face is always wrong. Something's wrong. Uh, for this one, torso 
looks pretty good. Even the kind of skin up near the, the neck is printed actually pretty well. The back is printed pretty well. Um, the legs are just plain black, and a lot of people complained about that, but to be honest, I think it's fine. I don't see any reason for her to have leg print. Like, she literally just has boots. So I don't, I don't really see why that would warrant Lego spending the extra money to get the leg prints. Um, the hair is better than the previous ones. I don't have a previous Scarlet Witch to compare with, unfortunately. But it's better, but not, not there yet. The face is... I'm not sure what's going on with the face. I'm not. She's so happy. And even when you turn it around, look, she's like using her powers and she's all like happy about it. She was a mess in Endgame. I don't understand the choices here. I really don't. So that's weird. Um, and then the other downside is that for some reason this version does not come with the cloth skirt piece or kind of coattail piece that the Civil War version did, which is a bit of a disappointment, honestly. I would have liked to see that come back. So, not a bad figure, but not quite there either. Here are the rest of the Power Burst pieces. Well, you get Power Burst, you get a couple of these cones, and you get a couple of these little handles to kind of assemble yourself some of the power effects. So that's pretty cool. I really like these pieces. Um, a lot of people complain the fact that they're not red because, you know, Scarlet Witch, red. Um, but to be honest, I really, really like this shade of pink. And I think it, even though it's not completely accurate, I think it was the right choice. I couldn't tell you why. I just, it just feels like Lego made the right choice with this color. Maybe that's just because I love this shade of pink. But I think it was a good choice. One of the reasons I think it was a good choice was because you can do this. This is just like a Marvel Legends figure of Black Panther that came with effect pieces almost exactly like this. So I think it was really cool to be able to recreate this using these parts. So that's one of the reasons why I like the pink. Now let me put those aside and we'll look at Black Panther. A lot of people were upset that Black Panther didn't have leg print. And, you know, I mean, I can see where they're coming from. I really can. It does look a little abrupt to have all this intricate printing go down and cut off. But I think it's fine. I really, I'm, I'm on the side of him not needing the print. The torso looks fantastic. The head looks fantastic. The, all the purple in there, the Wakandan kind of symbols. It looks amazing. So does the back print. It's just really, really, really good. And I think that kind of makes up for the fact that he doesn't have leg print. I mean, the purple would continue down onto the legs, sure. But the rest of his detail is just kind of black on black. So it's a little unnecessary. So as it is, I really like this figure. Um, and it's great to get a endgame version of Black Panther. Now, I'm actually going to grab the first version of Black Panther and drop him in here so we can see them side by side. There we go. Here's the Civil War version. This is the first Black Panther minifigure we ever got in Lego form. And see, look, he's never had leg print from the very beginning. Um, the thing that I do find strange is the fact that we stopped getting printing for the ears. You can see how the Civil War version has like a silver print for the ears, and this guy has none. That's a little odd, but I think these look fantastic side by side, and it really shows off how Black Panther's suit kind of evolved through the movies. Speaking of a character who has evolved throughout the movies, we have Fat Thor. Uh, obviously, being a minifigure, you can't have a fat minifigure, so they just kind of made his printing a little bit more rounded out, which I think was a pretty good compromise. I really like this figure a lot. But before we talk more about the figure, I want to talk about Stormbreaker real quick. 
because this is not the build that they tell you to do in the set. Let me bring in the instructions. That is the Stormbreaker that they tell you to build. What is that? That is a pile of garbage. I, I apologize to whoever designed this set, but that is absolute garbage. It does not look like Stormbreaker at all. It's short, it's blocky, it just is not good. Um, I don't know who originally came up with this design, the one I'm using. It was not me. It was someone else. Uh, but again, I don't know who I was told about this through a friend who had found it, and so I can't give proper credit. But I think this looks so much better. Just so much better. It's more of a proper size too. This is using a short bar for the handle. So, because Stormbreaker is not a super, super long weapon, but it's not short like Mjolnir is either. So I think this strikes the perfect balance. It looks good, it's easy to build, and only requires a few extra pieces. So that's what I used instead, and I will not be building the other one. Now let's get back to looking at Thor himself. He has finally some long hair. They've been using the same hair piece for Thor so long, I didn't think that they were ever gonna change it, but we have the Aquaman hair in this dark tan, which is perfect. We have a new head. Look at that, that's great. Kinda got a scruffy beard like he did. You can see a bit how they printed the circles bulging outward to show that he's fat. His cape, interestingly enough, is a single hole cape to make sure that it folds well underneath the hair. He has a lightning eye face, which I really like. I like that Lego started doing this. Before they just had Thor with like angry faces, but now that he has lightning that comes out of his eyes in the movies, they've started adding this and I really like it. And then of course he has back print. Pretty simple back print because he doesn't really have much back there anyway. Um, once again, people have complained about him not having leg printing, and I think especially for Thor, it's not needed. He literally has nothing but black on black details there. So I think complaining about leg printing for Thor is um, uh, not worth it. It's just not. I think this figure looks amazing as is. Um, and I'm really happy that we finally have the fat Thor. Really quick, here is a comparison between the various Thors, we have the uh, Dark World slash Age of Ultron Thor. We have the Ragnarok Thor, who has a crooked helmet at the moment, and then Endgame Thor. So you can see the difference between the hairs. Um, let me take the hair off for this guy. You can see the two lightning eye faces we have. Uh, the beard for this guy is actually darker, interestingly enough. And then, this guy does not have lightning eye face at all. So it's really cool to see kind of, like I was saying, the evolution of the character throughout the movies. Next up, we have Captain America. And yes, he comes with Mjolnir. How cool is that? Mjolnir remains unchanged. It has been the same piece since Avengers 1, and it stays the same here. Just all gray, nicely molded piece. Cap looks great holding it. We always knew he was worthy. Uh, the shield, on the other hand, the shield is the updated one. There have been three versions of Cap's shield so far. There have been a dark red one. That was in the first uh, wave of Avengers sets. Then there was the bright red one here, which was all red with the rest printed on it. And now we have this one that's printed on gray. Um, I like the newest one the best. I think the print is the best for it. I will say though that I feel silver, pearl silver for the back color would have been uh, the best choice. Not sure why they went with gray when they have silver, but it's pretty good as it is. Um, and then once again, we have a character with no leg print, which if anybody would have gotten leg print in here, I would have liked to see Cap have it or dual molded legs. That would have been great, but 
they didn't give it to us and I honestly don't think it looks that bad uh, without he has his armor with the scales which is like black printed on the dark blue the star has some detail in the center of it he has the little magnet on the back and he has his helmet which this is the first time I have gotten this helmet piece and I absolutely love it he does look a little strange with this gap on the side because you know he doesn't have ears but I think it's so much better than the on the head print although I will say I have a lot of nostalgia for this kind of printed on version so I still like this one but we don't have to deal with the skin color difference anymore which is great and you can see the torso prints how different they are this is the Age of Ultron cap then we have the Civil War cap who is exactly the same he just had a different face so let's compare the faces there we go we have no what are these these little lines on his cheeks these are not present for this new cap um, he's smiling around the back for this one angry around the back for that one mm. I do think the older face looks more accurate overall but this chin strap is really great addition but I'm curious what does this look like well he looks weird without the chin strap but that's kind of cool what about the angry face also weird without the chin strap so that was kind of a look at the older caps those are the only two I have on hand right now um, he does come with his hair for this set that's a very nice inclusion uh, they usually don't do that Lego usually is kind of stingy with giving out hair pieces but they gave it to us this time um, what can I say this is pretty much the I would say the definitive version of cap for Lego he looks great the only thing that he could use is a pair of dual molded legs which they do exist in the right color you just have to go and buy them from Bricklink and here he is the man the myth the legend Iron Man the dude who saved the entire universe from being shredded down to atoms here he is in his mark 85 armor he has a nano shield which is pretty cool I must admit the way Lego made this is pretty clever it's just three parts built on top of each other and then you put some stickers on um, I will say the stickers for this were a pain in the butt they were so hard to get right um, and they're clear which means they can bubble up on the underside it cause all sorts of problems but when you're done it looks pretty good looks pretty accurate to what we see in both um, Infinity War and Endgame I like it and we're finally getting some nano stuff other than just the thruster packs because that's all Lego's done in the past he has a power blast piece which actually works pretty well that has worked better than any of the other times I've tried it and he comes with one of those big kind of splat pieces and then some thrusters so he can be flying up off the ground like that and then we have Iron Man himself like I said this is the mark 85 armor he has the gold arms he has leg print he needs leg print he also has footprint which is pretty cool got the very organic look I love the brighter red on the darker red it just adds a great depth to the whole figure around the back once again very organic lines the eyes of this suit are blue usually Lego prints them in white but he he has the blue eyes for this one as well as mark 50 this is the same faceplate as the mark 50 so we've got the print up there as well it is the old style we can hinge it open Tony Stark is underneath close that he's got kind of a smirking face here flip it around he has his heads up display which is pretty cool and once again we do get a hairpiece for him so that's really nice and this is the second time mark 85 has appeared um, the first time was in the other Avengers compound battle which was kind of a trash set so I'm really happy to see him return here so that 
Lego is not forcing people to do that purchase that was a ridiculously sized set for... Don't get me started. It was a bad set, okay? Really quick, here's a comparison. We have the Mark 50 over here. You can see they're very similar in their designs. Uh, the Mark 85 just has a lot more gold. And then also, just for kicks, I brought in the Mark 1. So we can kind of see the progression. We have the start of Iron Man's journey and the end of it in minifigure form. And we have an Ant-Man. Look at that. Look at the print. The print is fantastic. Um, I do have the minifigure version of Ant-Man, but he is currently packed up and I have not pulled him out. So you'll just have to take my word for it. This print is as accurate as Lego could possibly get it. It looks so good. Turn around to the back, just the head is printed. And the interesting thing is that since they're so small, the set includes two of them. So you get two Ant-Mans. That's pretty cool. I am super happy that they included him, and I don't think they could have done any better with this little guy. And last but not least, we have the Mad Titan himself. Thanos, finally with his bald head. Um, technically, this figure is still inaccurate because he was supposed to have the shoulder armors and Lego removed that, but I will take it any day of the week over those helmeted Thanoses. He has his Butter Knife of Doom. It can come in half, and they actually give you a pole, and they suggest you make him have two swords, which he never had. Um, yeah, it's a little weird, and it's very oversized. I appreciate the effort, but it's meh. Now, Thanos himself. Look at that. He has a new torso with some nice print. Mine actually looks like it got dinged or something during production, so it's got like a mark, which is easily overlooked as battle damage. Um, same purple arms as we've always seen, moves forward and back. Uh, they did one with armor print that matches this front armor, but for some reason they didn't bring them back here. No back print. Some studs back there, which is cool. Very interesting. I'm very interested to see what LEGO will do with those. And then the head. The head is on a minifigure neck. So let me go ahead and we will grab the Chitauri, yoink his head off, and look at that. <laughs> look at how stupid that looks. But we can also do this, which means if you want, you can take the minifigure Thanos and swap heads and have a giant bobbleheaded Thanos, which is pretty cool. Put it back on. Um, he is also the first big figure to have, like, head rotation, I believe. Like that. I mean, I guess Killo from Ninjago, technically, but he just had a minifigure head. This is a actual big fig head, which is awesome. It looks really good. I'm not sold on the expression. I know they were going for the mad haha -ha face, but I think stern or angry would have been better. And then, I don't have another Thanos for comparison, but here is Hulk. And you can see... Hulk's head is static, the hair is static, um, and his head cannot move, while Thanos can turn from side to side, which is fantastic. We did not get a helmet for Thanos yet, so I'm hoping that LEGO will start making helmets and even hairs like for Hulk. Like, when are we going to get Hulk with this movable head? I need a Hulk. Alrighty, now we are moving on to the builds. And we have Ant-Man's, or I guess, was it Luis's van? Or was it Ant-Man's at that point? Either way, Ant-Man's big, ugly van with the funny horn. And I honestly am shocked we got this as a Lego build. I didn't think that they were going to do that when the leaks said that we were going to get a van. I didn't believe them. But here it is, and it looks perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Putting these stickers on, the XCON stickers, was not perfect. That was that was a pain. You have no reference points on that brick. You just have to kind of guess. Um, so that was weird. But the rest of it is fantastic. The stripe, 
the way they built the front, the fact that there's a little tiny Ant-Man and two ants as, as kind of like those family stickers you see on the back of cars. This is Ant-Man and ants. Got a extra tire. This hinges up, and there's a sticker for the time machine in there. How cool is that? That one was also a bit of a pain. To be honest, all of the stickers in this set were for some reason a pain. I'm not sure why. They just were. But still, very cool. You can pop the roof off. There's a space for probably a good three minifigures in there. There's also a space for you to drop your cup or something through to the ground. Not sure why Lego did that. All it would have taken was a one by what would that be? A one by eight? One by eight plate there. Would have covered those up. So that's a little strange. Um, I am really happy to get these big tiles though. Those are super cool. I don't see those very often. Yeah, overall, super happy with this. It's, like I said, it's literally perfect. I don't see how Lego could have done this any better. Well, covering up those holes on the bottom. That would be the only way they could do it better. So the Avengers compound part of this whole set is kind of in three parts. We have the main building, and then we have these two side builds. This is just a piece that had fallen off of one of the Avengers buildings during the bombing. You can move it back and forth a little bit. I really like how this looks. The sticker on here, even though it's massive and nerve-wracking to put on, looks great. The way they built up the rocks here looks great. The way it looks all broken. It even looks decent around the back, which I appreciate. Those are a little ugly, but... Lego didn't even have to go the extra mile and give us the angles around the back. So this is really cool. I think it's a great uh, scene setter for, you know, that kind of ruin of the endgame final battle. And then we have this. This is a defense turret, which really has not any grounds in the uh, movie itself, but it looks cool. Uh, this is a new spring shooter style, I believe. I've not seen it before. It is pretty strong. Set up a Chitauri. Ready. There we go. Just one bullet, but it's a big chunky one, so you won't have to worry about losing it. And you can rotate it all around. You can move it up and down. It's all, there's nowhere you can hide from this gun. Both of the assemblies attach on with Technic holes and so you can easily pull them off and use them elsewhere. Finally we have the main section of the build. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty small, but it has the right shaping. The windows kind of come out the way we saw so often in the movies. Got a door down here. Minifigure hand scanner which um, Lego has been getting a little sloppy with the way they cut their stickers, and so this one, to actually line it up with the piece, the designs are off-center, which is kind of disappointing. But up top, we have a radar, spins around, can move down. It's not really useful. This, I guess, I don't know, was this a fin? Then we have, like, a loud loudspeaker. Turn it around to the back. You can see it is quite shallow. And we've got a fair bit going on here, actually. We got some guns up here for, that would be Black Widow who would be using these guns, but we all know she's not here during that. There are some stickers there of Rocket and Captain Marvel. We have a coffee table with the Avengers logo. Pretty cool. Actual Lego coffee cup piece, which is great. I was not expecting that at all. Plant over there near the window. Walkway in the kind of foyer, I guess. There is a door to go through. We'll look at this in a second. And um, there's the laser prison for Thanos, because we all know they caught him and locked him in a laser prison. I know they needed to do some sort of play features or whatever for this set, but come on, really? Like, this is such a huge amount of wasted space. Like, if I put a minifigure in there, 
look how much space there is. Like, I feel like this would have been much better used if there was a staircase or another room, like a, extend this across, and then we would have had another room up here and down here. It just feels like a, they got lazy. So, I mean, it's all right, but it does feel like they got lazy. Overall, though, this is a very good uh, set piece. It looks pretty accurate, and I would be interested to see if it connects at all well with the first one that LEGO did. Um, but like I said, I don't have that set because it's kind of a trash set. But, you know, overall, pretty good. It has its flaws. Um, laser gate, why? So here's that little table you saw earlier. It has a computer with Iron Man's time travel watch uh, being calculated up there. And then we have the nano gauntlet here in its kind of first form where it's small. Um, there are some stickers on the sides, which again, those stickers were a pain. I didn't line up that one quite right. But it is pretty cool once you get it on there. Uh, you can take the nano gauntlet off. I am honestly very disappointed though that LEGO did not print it with the stones. That would have been great if they did, but they kind of cut a little bit of corners there and didn't. So, not bad, but could have been better. But I do really love the computer with the uh, time GPS calculation on there. As you probably saw, this just sets on these jumpers here. So, it can be easily removed and then put back in. Um, I think it would have been better to have this up against the window. So it would be more like that, and there would be space to move the minifigures around in there. But I guess that kind of would have blocked the door. So that's why they made it removable. But I definitely think it was a nice detail. I really like it. Well, there you have it. That is the Avengers Endgame Final Battle. So this set retails, or is going to retail, for I think it's $70, which... To be honest, that is way less than I was expecting. I paid 90 for this set, but that was only because this set is not actually released in the US as of the time of the recording of this video. It's released in other parts of the world, but not the US. In the US, it releases on August 1st. Um, so I did have to pay a little more to get it. 90 does feel a little steep, especially because the building is kind of insubstantial, but the lineup of minifigures is so good I can't even barely complain about that. We got Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor all in one set. Lego almost is never that generous unless the set is like a couple hundred dollars. Usually they would do like a $30 set here, a $40 set there, you know, and we'd have to buy them all to get all of them. And then the inclusion of Black Panther and Scarlet Witch are great. Tiny Ant-Man is great. And then of course, Thanos. The finally bald Thanos. I think it's a very fair price, $70 for this set. Um, like I was saying, there are some complaints that people have had about this set, lack of leg printing. Uh, a lot of people said that Black Panther shouldn't have been included since he's included in a smaller set um, in this wave that we should have gotten Hawkeye or someone else, but... I don't know. We may see Hawkeye in a later set. Um, and like I said, the leg printing, I think for the most part, the figures are fine. Cap could have used dual molded legs. But other than that, it's honestly, in my opinion, no leg printing is fine. Uh, the laser gate prison thing, why? Lego, why? You could have done anything else there, literally anything else, and it would have been great. I feel like this building is kind of cut in half down the middle, and we have the side that is totally inaccurate, which is the turret and laser prison, and then we have the side that is accurate that's got, you know, all the stuff from the movie and the broken Avengers thing. Um, so that is a little weird, wasted space. But overall, this feels like if you were to only ever buy one Marvel set, this would be the one to buy. It's the perfect starter set for someone getting into Marvel. It's just 
so solid and well-rounded. Um, I really, really, really like it. I'm pro I've said that probably too many times in this video, but I just can't get over the fact that we got Cap, Iron Man, and Thor all in one set. And that Lego made the van. Like, really? I'm shocked. And, of course, Thanos. So, at the end of the day, this set does have its issues, but it is still fantastic. It fills some much-needed holes in the, well, it fill, starts to fill some of the holes in the endgame sets. The endgame sets were terrible. But now the Infinity Saga is hopefully going to set that to right, and LEGO has a very, very strong start with this first wave. And I, like I said, this if you were to only buy one of the sets from the entire wave, this would be it. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.